Hi guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we have a fantastic product for you. Not sure about the dramatic lean back. But today we are talking about Android tablet which is under $100. And it's great for you guys that want media streaming on a budget. Let's go. Hi guys, it's SBOT and welcome back to a brand new video. Like I said, today we are talking this absolute wonder kind. Wonder kind! What sort of a word is wonder kind? I, I'm almost tempted to end the video here and just not do it because you don't just, you shouldn't be watching this, to be honest. With words like wonder kind, just turn off, please. Save yourself. No, we have an, this amazing product here. It's under $100. So for anyone who wants an Android tablet on a budget, then look no further than this. I'll get straight to all of the unboxing, all of the specs, all of the benchmarks right after, well, now. Remember to like and share if you do enjoy the video and find it helpful. And subscribe, hit the notification button if you're new to the channel. Let's flip the camera and unbox this. But I'm not going to say bad boy because people hate that. This product... Let's go. Okay, so this is the Android tablet. It's, well, it's called Voyo. Not sure about the name, but anyway. So you've got photos, music, Wi-Fi, office, game, movie, all the good stuff on here. The website is there in case you wanted to check it out in more detail. But if we just scroll onto the site, scroll as if it's a computer. We're not scrolling, we're turning, right. Onto the back, we have lots of Chinese writing, but the specs there, it looks like to me we have... 2 gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage straight out of that, um, which of course for an Android tablet isn't that bad to be honest. Um, we're just going to move that down there and we're going to open it up and the first thing you're going to see is, it's going to be in this basically, I've, I've already taken it out because I've already had a go with it, but this is on here obviously, um, this is the front so it looks kind of like a, you know your standard Android tablet. Um, then on the back is a, quite a nice champagne gold colour which I do quite like and of course you've got the logo there. You've, so you've got the camera on the back there which is a 5 megapixel camera and then you've also got one on the front, the front facing one is a 2 megapixel camera. So it's not going to be your best cameras on the market let's be honest, um, but it is going to it is going to be you know more than acceptable for a tablet camera if you're taking serious camera shots on a tablet in this day and age um then there's far better things to use but of course you can use it you know the odd occasion you want to catch a little uh, camera and you, you catch a camera catch a photograph when you have your tablet in your hand you are going to get a fairly standard you know sort of photo so not too many problems there okay on the side you have the volume rockers up and down you've also got the power on button there and then on the other side there you've obviously got the charging port and you've also got that which you can take that back off and that is in case you wanted to add a sim cards or additional storage so it's got 32 gigs of storage but of course you can add to it, so that is pretty good as well. A uh, nice little addition there for a tablet that's again, only a budget at under $100. Okay, so we've snapped that back on. I'm now gonna power this bad boy up and see what's inside. Well, not what's inside, but obviously what the actual uh, quality of the screen's like and everything. So it comes up with MediaTek and a little Android icon there. Loads up, Android in the middle. Now this is running OS Android at 6.0, so it's not the latest Android, which of course is Android 7, soon to be Android 8, but it is still, for many things like Kodi and everything like that, you are still completely fine with Android 6. It's still a pretty decent uh, operating system. So there's a nice, nice little uh, hello with a little noise there. So I'm gonna turn it to its side, as obviously the same with normal Android 6.0, you've got the swipe down from the top. I'm just gonna turn the brightness up a bit. So as you can see, it's a pretty nice color to be honest. Obviously there's no sort of extra page at the moment because I've not loaded any apps onto it. Sorry for the fingerprint smudges on there, that's not how it'll look on your one. But of course that is, you know, it, it's quite a nice screen, it's not the best screen by any means. If you're going to be spending the top money on products, you of course are going to get better screens. It is a decent screen, you're not going to have any problems with it, but it's not like a Samsung for example or anything like that. So the screen is a 10.1 inch screen, 1920 by 1200 and it's an IPS capacitive screen. The viewing angles aren't the best as you can see if I do that for example you, you then start to lose the clarity of the actual screen but at a normal viewing angle as you can see it does look fairly vibrant again not like a Samsung for example but not too bad got nice responsive buttons like when you press it, it it does work pretty well and there's a nice sort of vibrate on there a little bit too heavy the vibrate for me personally but if you're into that sort of stuff then you do have that nice vibrate when you do press the uh, sort of onboard on screen 
software buttons on here. So I'm just going to sign into my Wi-Fi and then I'm going to download like a Kodi for example just to see how it runs. So I am now connected to my Wi-Fi and I'm going to now go onto the Play Store to download the Kodi app for example. So this is basically a great option if, if you want to go portable with your media streaming or anything like that with a tablet and you don't want to take like Android boxes, Fire Sticks, things like that away with you. You can take this, you know, just chuck it in your bag and then of course use the same apps and software in order to do what you want. So for example if I click on Kodi again it loads up straight away and it will load up with Kodi 17 Krypton because of course you can get Kodi 17 Krypton on this because it's Android 6.0. So again, we're clicking on these. So like I said, whatever you do click on, it does work straight away. So I ran two benchmark scores, one using Geekbench, and as you can see here, you've got a single core of 573 and a multi-core score. Oh, we've gone off. Come back. This is one thing that I, uh, this is a perfect example. One thing I don't like about this is that there's no home button. You have to press the power on uh, switch there. I would like to see a home button, but it, again, it's not the end of the world, but I would like to see it. And a multi-core score, as you can see there, of 2,271. So, so not amazing specs, not terrible specs. It's again, somewhere in between, which again, for this sort of price, it's a pretty decent score. Um, I will leave link to this video, a video that I did my review on for the smart, for the, well, my, in my opinion, there's only two best smartphones around at the moment for a budget. And one of them is in the video that I'll leave linked here. And, and you'll be able to compare what, what truly high spec score should be compared to this one. But nevertheless, that is the score for the Geekbench. I also did an Antutu benchmark and of course do quite a few of them on this channel. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to come back out and we're going to go onto that benchmark. And as you can see there, 36,072 is not a bad score for again this sort of price range. Um, Again, a lot of you guys will know about the Android boxes that I review, and it varies from sort of late 20s right up to around 70, 80,000 in terms of benchmark scores. Uh, some of the Android boxes that I have reviewed that are around 60, 70 pounds or dollars are around this sort of uh, benchmark score. So it's not, it's it, 36,000 isn't a terrible score. So you've got 3D, 4,798, uh, UX, 14,867, uh, CPU of 12,534, and RAM, 3,873. In terms of specs, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the actual full specs of this actual Android tablet. So it's got a 5,000 milliamp battery, which would usually be a massive battery for a phone, for example, but it's obviously a much larger screen. So you are going to get uh, a lot of juice being taken more from the screen, uh, depending on how bright you have the screen as well will vary how much you get through the day. But most people don't use this as a daily driver, for example, so you, they, you'll have your phone. You will use this you know, for a few hours to watch a film or something and you will have no problems watching a film uh, with this. Okay, so it is using a MediaTek MT6753 octa-core processor. Uh, GPU is Mali 720. System, like I said, is Android 6.0. RAM, 2 gigabytes. Capacity, 32 gigabytes. But again, you can obviously extend using that uh, external SD card. In terms of weight, it's 450 grams. So it's, you know, it's, it's fairly light, to be honest. It's not the heaviest so i'm now just going to quickly run down my likes and dislikes very very simple for you likes i like the look of it i like the champagne gold color you know simple logo there nice little uh, camera with the sort of silver coloring around the outside uh, dual speakers on the back I also like the responsiveness of any of the buttons that you can use any of the apps they load straight away you don't have any you know, double tapping in order for things to work. You know, 99% of the time it is going to work as soon as you click on it. Fairly decent benchmark scores in terms of the price range again. So another good thing about this. Right, now we're going to get onto the bad things about this. In my personal opinion, I don't like the fact there is no home button. Okay, you have to press the power if your screen goes off, which is not going to be a deal breaker for some people, but it's something that I would like to see. Number two, if you're on a app like Kodi, for example, and you're loading up here, there is no onboard or capacitive buttons here for back and recent apps you have to swipe down which doesn't always register as you can see you have to swipe down to then get the things on here uh, and then of course then you can go to recent apps 
or you can go to home by clicking on that. I would like to see the capacitive buttons on the actual uh, chin of the tablet. That would be my personal opinion. Number three, I think the sound quality could be improved. It's not terrible, but it is a little bit tinny when you turn it right up. And number four, the Wi-Fi signal could be better. I tend to feel that it is best when you're in the same room as the router. When you go to other rooms in the house, it still works in terms of connecting to the internet and everything, but it does wane a little bit the further you move away from the router in quite a short space of time. So let me know what you think of this in the comment section below. Like I said, I think for the price at under $100, this is a great product. No, it's not going to be the best product for media streaming. It's not going to be the best product for a tablet in general. But if you want that, you are going to have to pay not sure why I'm doing windscreen wipers with my fingers, but anyway, you are going to have to pay more money if you want to see a better product. You will get worse products around this sort of price as well, because this is a good middle ground product. Kind of get what you pay for. If you're looking for a decent budget option, this is going to be it. If you're looking for high-end specs, high-end performance, all that sort of stuff, then you're going to have to spend more money. So best tablet on the market at the moment? No. One of the best budget products at this moment in time Yes. So that was, of course, my review of this Android tablet, which is under $100. I will leave all the information about this product in the video description below and the link in case you want to go through to the website and have a look in more detail. Remember to like and share if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful and subscribe and hit the notification button if you're new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video. I will see you in the next one. It's ASBIT. Peace out. Hi, guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Long story. Don't ask. Welcome back to a brand new video. A happy 4th of July for yesterday for everyone in America. Today we're going to be discussing the third party Exodus add-on. Whether it is indeed going to be sort of going away and alternatives potentially that you might want to use. We're also going to be discussing uh, TV add-ons as well. A lot of you guys have been trying to get information about the Fusion Source Link. Uh, so that's what I'm going to get to as well today. We've got all of that coming up.